everybody, this is Soldier's Hockey Weekly Shot at K-Pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 275, and we're recording on March 25th, 2024. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. All right, quick reminder, you know, check out Soldier Talk on your favorite podcast platforms, sub to us on YouTube, sub to us wherever you find us, join the Soldier Talk Discord, be a part of the nation, the links are in the description of uh, wherever you're finding us. We got a shout out this week, we have a new fire patron. I love Ooh. this name. Their name is Hangry. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. I'm hangry, you know? Like, when you're beyond hungry, <laughs> you hangry. That's their name. Yes. I like that name. That's a good name. Um, And then in the after hours, State of the Nation, Anita has to dip again, so she might not be here for this, <laughs> but you got the best weapon in a zombie apocalypse World Cup, so it is not K-pop related, so we'll tell you when to leave if you're just here for the K-pop. But we're going to be talking about the best weapon to use during a zombie apocalypse. I have very strong opinions about this topic as well. Mm. I read a book about this. Oh I'll my explain God. more mm-hmm. later. Wow. Um, let's All just right. get into the big new releases. We got four again. You know, the voting was like, pe- there was only like six, seven songs to choose between. But like four of these songs got over 25 votes. So we kind of had to cover four. Oh. Um, Ooh. First one, Purple Kiss. BBB, I, I don't know if you, the B's mean anything, but I'm just going to call it BBB. The, so we got Young Posse XXL. We have Eyelet, their debut with Magnetic. And we have NTT Dream with Smoothie. But let's start at the top. Purple Kiss, BBB, they are from RBW. Last uh, three songs, Seven Heaven, Sweet Juice, Nerdy. How do we feel about this Purple Kiss track, everyone? Can I just start off? I hope I'm not the only one. But Go did the it. instrumental remind anybody... Of Wish You Hell by Wendy. Oh, okay. I wait. Mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a similar genre. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it w- I was listening to both, like going back and forth, because I feel like I kept mixing the two, because the melody or maybe like the way some of the vocal top line was delivered was kind Especially of similar. the verses. The verses. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Not yeah, the chorus, yeah. not the chorus. The chorus, no, I think, the chorus, is Wendy didn't, didn't break it down all of a sudden. Not, right. No. Not happen. But it was. I thought it was just very interesting. It felt like a like a slower, more dreamlike pop, yeah, yeah. version mm. of that. But I I think overall I liked this sound. It seems very different than the previous stuff. Um, I feel like I always associate Purple Kiss with their more Hall- Halloween theme. They're more like yeah, they do a little bit of horror theme. Yeah, K-pop yeah. horror. <laughs> Yeah, Memphis yeah. K-pop over here. Memphis <laughs> K-pop. Okay. 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 Um, I okay. I think one of the common themes this week across a couple of the songs. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Is that? they build up so much goodwill in the intro, and then the verses and the pre-chorus, and then they lose me once we get to the actual chorus. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Like you built up so much, like, oh yeah, oh, I'm so happy you're doing this. It's great. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then we get to the chorus, and I'm just like, <sighs> you know, like mm. I just have to sigh a <laughs> tiny bit. And that's not to say the chorus is bad. It's not bad. But at the same time, I wish we got something a little more melodic instead of just this like repetition. Repetition thing. Which is like I mean, it's 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 catchy, which I, I don't I don't think it's terrible, but I do I do get what you mean where after you hear it two, three times, it is a little bit underwhelming. It's a it it it, it comes down to this, right? Like if you are building a chorus, you gotta do two things. Especially pop music, you gotta do two things. One, it's gotta be a chorus, and the other part is it is that it's gotta like hook on, it's gotta latch on to the audience and the listeners. Like I gotta mm-hmm. come back and be like, Oh yeah, like that's the banger section of the song, you know what I mean? Easiest way to do that is make something that is easy to, you know, absorb, process, and kind of, you know, just hum along on your own, right? Like, that's like, that's, that's the, you know, how, how you make a good repetitive course. Except at this point, I feel like we're dialing a little too far into making something that is like catchy to the point where it's getting annoying. You know what I mean? That's, it's that's not where just I got. them too. It's like everyone. A lot of groups are doing this, like falling into this trap these days. Right, right, right. There was a moment in K-pop where, like, that was very mainstream. Like, I, I remember, like, there was a um, large amount of criticism towards, like, uh, uh, second-generation K-pop groups that were doing very repetitive courses. Like, if you think about Popi Popi or Lovey Dovey by Tiara. Oh, stuff like that. Or, like, yeah. Abracadabra by Brownie Girls. Like, that, that was a thing. 
Mm. Um, but those songs typically would balance out those repetitive yeah. sections with the very melodic section. There would be like a two face kind of chorus. Um, the thing is. Because these songs have to be under three minutes now, we're like skipping past all that. And that's getting, yeah, it's coming at a cost. You know what I mean? It's coming at a mm. hefty cost almost. Um, so I do agree. The chorus is a little, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would feel a little better about the song if the chorus is a little better built. But on the other hand, um, I also do see where Anita is going, where it's like kind of chill, it's kind of laid back. Um, yeah. The arrangement of it is actually very different. The instrumentation is very different. Like it's got this like synthy pluck bass and these cowbells, and that's all cool. But like if you think about the way those instruments are used, it's actually very similar to Wendy. So I, I definitely see where you're going with that. Um, mm-hmm. let's, let's put it this way: I ain't gonna be singing bad behavior like all like in my room. It ain't just not gonna happen, right? Aww. Like <laughs> I might like I might sing "I Wish You Hell" the Wendy thing because it's at least a little melodic, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Like that could happen. Yeah. But something like this where it's just like straight repetition, it just ain't really gonna ain't really gonna get it from me. I mean um, the, th- the thing is like I feel like that might work for like a lot of the other parts of the K pop audience. Like mm-hmm. I recognize that we are used to melodic choruses and something that has a little more like melodic substance, but like on the other hand, there's plenty of K pop fans who are like very willing to latch on to repetitive stuff like this. So I don't I mean, know. It's just a shame because the vocals we got were really good. Other than like oh, you know, yeah. rock oh, the yeah. song. Nice. Oh yeah, and I uh, this is one of those songs that's also where uh, bridges in K-pop are kind of having an identity crisis because of the shortening of the songs. Where you know traditionally mm. you would expect like two verses, two choruses, we repeat the chorus, and then we got a bridge, and then we probably do the chorus one more time, and then we end the song, right? Right. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Or we put a dance break somewhere near the end, right? Sure. right. Um, something mm-hmm. like that. But because we're now shortening the songs so much. It's interesting to see a song like this where the pre-chorus almost sounds like a bridge, you know, has that kind of dreamlike mm. effect going on mm-hmm. because it doesn't have a normal bridge. So they're like, I guess we'll just kind of put bridge elements, you know, oh. in, in the front. Um, I don't know. That was just some food for thought. I don't ha- I don't have like a strong opinion either way, like having a bridge, not having a bridge. I like bridges. <laughs> okay. I kind of well, miss that's, them. That's, that's something. Um, but a lot of songs are foregoing that these days. It, it, it kind of reminds me how... Uh, this is a sports reference, but the NFL, oh. they, there's mm-hmm. normally a guy who runs the ball. And traditionally, there was another guy in front of him who would block for him. But as okay. things evolved, they kind of got rid of that position as a whole. So it's kind of like a weird gray zone now. I oh. think that's what's becoming with Bridges, where, you know, traditionally all songs had Bridges. It was great, whatever. But now it's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what to do with this. For some of these groups mm. um I, I think that kind of goes back to how i feel about like shorter songs in general is like we understand i understand the need that these pop songs need to be under three minutes i get it yeah. there's a business motive behind it some groups just do a better job with it because they take that to their advantage other groups kind of flop a little bit because they just skip apart and they just go with that which like sometimes it'll work um, in the case of Purple Kiss, I don't want to say it like absolutely flopped because I do feel like the song itself kind of works fine. It's like the chorus mm-hmm. I have an issue with. Um, but if I'm listening to this song, I don't know. I don't. There's nothing that sticks. You know what I mean? Besides like bad beat, hate fear, bad beat. Hate, Other fear. than that, like if you ask me, like oh yeah, yeah, sing the sing the Purple Kiss song in like a week, right? Well, what was great about it? I don't think I'd have too many answers in about a week, right? That's yeah. that's a problem. Mm. That's that's an inherent problem. Um. Also, we're left with this, with this issue where, like, I feel like Swan is such a great vocalist, and like, yeah, Swan and Going are doing quality. like, are, they're singing so well. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, it's like oh, I wish we got a little something more, but the song we got, right? Um, how do you guys feel about the the visuals? Oh, I thought it was kind of interesting because yeah, I I found it to be like a contrast between like the styling mm-hmm. and the sound. Right, because mm, mm. it's very chill, but then the styling is very mm, girl crush type, maybe like very mm. dark, like the camo and the glossy black outfits, and like yes, 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 that being in like I don't know, like at some points I felt like it was almost like a very like 
like a like a like a high teen Stacy esque kind of background at certain points with like the basketball court yeah. on the background. Yeah, like that mm-hmm. stuff like that was really cool. I like that. It also had like a Fortnite gun scene, but it kind of looked like the the <laughs> holiday holy as well with the the, the oh. dust, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, I know holy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure holy's today too, right? Which it is, is. kind of ironic. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of had a dust scene going on, right? Where they're <laughs> <laughs> the, like with the glitter all coming out of the guns and stuff like that. It's it's kind of really like actually ironic that that's happening here, but um. <laughs> So if you're celebrating the the holy, hey, there you go. Wish you the best. Uh, but um, I don't know. The, to me, the music video was kind of weird. Like it was, it was no quite theme. simple. It's just kind of doing random shit. I thought. Yeah, not a ton of storyline, if anything. I, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been the hugest fan of the Purple Kiss comebacks overall in the last like year or so. Um, mm. but then again, like. I remember what they were about. It's just this one feels like they kind of like, kind of dialed it in for a bit because you know, like you know what I mean. Like they dialed it into what they think the meta is right now. Right, I right. Think. The song yeah. style, the the visuals, the we music. We are losing video. some identity with some of these groups. By uh, some mm. of them are just making songs that are like, yeah, we're sort of in the same realm as everyone yeah. else. And I get like they can't push like horrorcore onto everything. I'm not asking to to you know do like you know ghost after vampire after stuff like that but at the same time like you know i mean you know it just felt kind of random which is i guess I... fine but you know okay how are we going to rate this let's let's keep moving um tingly yeah i'm, I'm okay with a low tingly on this one yeah <laughs> it's not it's not a bad song by any stretch of the imagination it's just but it's <laughs> wildly unmemorable at the issue it, it's just it's like if you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day for lunch it's just you know oh. it's another peanut butter jelly sandwich. It's not it's good, Ooh. but it's not gonna like blow your. It's, it, you didn't like add bananas and honey or anything to it, right? You didn't do anything oh, crazy. Wow. It's the it's, it's just, the it's, just thinner. it's the dilemma of being a K-pop podcasting every week. It's kind of music. Wendy, let's, one week. Let, let's go to the next one. All right, this is not a sound we get all the time. Young Hasi <laughs> oh, no. XXL. They're from Beats Entertainment via DSP. Uh, there are other two songs, Young Posse Up, Macaroni Cheese, one of the most divisive groups um, right now. People, <laughs> Some people love them, some people hate them. Um, I kind of feel like a boomer when I listen to Young Posse. I don't think I'm the, the target audience, uh, me in my early 30s. I don't think that's, I don't think I'm the, the target audience of this. But I could respect the commitment. Oh, right? okay. It's they are committed, committed to the for theme. sure. The, oh. the vis- visually, they, they keep using the same guy to make the music video. He also made Whoa. this one. The same guy who yeah. made the macaroni cheese. Um, Warren, you, you, this is more up your alley. How do you feel about this? <laughs> is it? Is it my up my alley? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you degenerate in your nice New York apartment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Times Square is not too far away from my apartment. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. No, I mean, okay, let's break the song down, right? It's a clear um, homage to uh mm. to and the Boys with Come Back Home. That is like, yeah, dark, hip-hop. yeah, very Old easy. School. Right. Um it's got this West Coast vibe to it, like this like nice bass guitar in the background and then these boom bap drums. Mm. Um and it at, at a lot of different points it feels more hip hop than K pop at, 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 at yes. a certain degree. Yeah. Um there is a couple change ups here and there. One notably being the one, two, three, four, five, that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other being the first half of the second verse where it goes into this trap section all of a sudden with yep. like the very stereotypical mm-hmm. trap sense. Um, I don't know. I mean, overall, it seems like they were, it was very clear what they were trying to do. Um, the parts that stuck to the kind of like boom bap sound, I, I kind of liked. All the other changes I oh. did not like. Um, but I mean that might come down to personal like preference. I'm not really gonna judge too much on that. Um, so yeah, I mean overall, it was fine. <laughs> it was alright. It was okay. I mean the lyrics are ridiculous per usual, right? Once there's, again, there's the, yeah, their lyrics are absolutely outrageous. Um, do do speak, do tell. What are the lyrics like? Like, I like the one uh, line though. Who is it? I think Sunye, is that her name? Yeah. Black, she's the uh, short hair, hair. Right? Yes. Yeah. She has her line of like big t- big t shirt, not Billy, just posse. Is that something along those lines? I, I feel like I like how they're it's like a, a sense of self 
awareness in a way. And I think the music video also showed it towards the ending of like, yeah, yeah this is not... This is not what's popular, but we're still gonna commit to it and have fun with it. And I feel like even though this is not my genre of choice, this is not what I am tending to gravitate towards, I have fun watching them perform. And I've seen a couple other performances with this song. And even though I felt like, oh, this is kind of slow compared to like macaroni cheese, this is not that upbeat and like youthful which i think was kind of what they had going on in, in their first couple songs um i still feel like they have a lot of energy and they they kind of sell it like even though if it's a little niche it, it's it's interesting to watch at least it, it is and i feel like they're very hyper aware of like hmm. them being both within k-pop yet being outsiders by going this creative direction right like if you um, that that Billy Lun was really cool, right? Like, and the line after mm. that was like, "I'm gonna do high touch while wearing my dad's T-shirt." Watch me, and I was like, "Okay." Like, as weird as that sounds, like it <laughs> is kind of clever and is a reference to both their creative direction and where they are in terms of, like of of this genre and this industry. Like, that's that mm. is pretty a clever line. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so there are parts of the song, parts of the lyrics that are like really really nice. Um, and then there are other parts of the song where I'm like, okay, you, you, you're saying XXL too many times, you know what I mean? Like, I like macaroni oh, yeah. cheese more. Oh, why? I feel like if we, if you're gonna commit to being this group, yeah, I want it. Yeah, full degeneracy. Like, I felt macaroni cheese was more like, <laughs> like it was like ironically oh, funny and interesting. Uh-huh, like uh-huh. I feel this XXL thing is just kind of like, okay. Let's pop our head a little for three minutes, you know, like, <laughs> mm. you know, where at least macaroni and cheese. I was like, I cannot believe these kids are doing this shit. Right. Like <laughs> more absurd. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I just want more absurdity if they're going to do it because the music yeah. videos are crazy. Always. I feel like the yes. video has been more absurd than macaroni and cheese the- with this one. Yeah. Like it began with an acceptable concept. <laughs> If you know what I mean, and it was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like they're doing crazy stuff while ordering a mac and cheese hamburger. Sure, whatever. And the next thing you know, they're like giant balloon people walking around. Well, you know what I mean. Like this is. Yeah, they're also yeah. hanging from a blimp by holding linking arms. Right, or right. Something at a certain point, <laughs> it's got this like Spy Kids aesthetic, and like yeah, oh, yeah. It's kind of a Spy Kids yeah. aesthetic yeah. for sure. <laughs> wow, yes. man, you hit that on the head. We're aging ourselves by saying that though, but yeah, it's my kids. Uh, yeah, good movies. Uh, um, I know I like Young Posse. I find them kind of refreshing. Like I like groups that have strong identities, and I think they definitely are doing that right now. Um, is it my favorite song? No. Do I think the chorus is good? Not really. But is it fun? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, mm. all I could really say. Um. Just, just like I don't know, it's mac- macaroni cheese is just leg- legendary for me. But this one's just not all the way there. Okay, if I'm like completely honest, like if we're since you brought up degeneracy, like <laughs> there, there's other songs from them that are like wildly more degenerate. Like Posse Up was one example. Yeah, the intro to this album called Scars is like a straight up rage Playboy Cardi kind of like oh, really yeah just straight cool. rage music with like the synths and stuff <laughs> I need um to check that out just like a whole lot of red out of nowhere and it's like okay this is like there we go like <laughs> zero <laughs> iq at its best you know what i mean like um so i understand where they kind of want to like make a distinguishment right like between like mm. complete what I like to call, refer to as garbage can music, I, only because I love it so much. Um, and then this kind of like it's a golden garbage can, it's it, gilded. It, right? it's, it's yeah. the one I enjoy. It's the one I eat out of. Exactly. No, I understand. I yeah. Understand. With XXL, however, it feels like it was a. They wanted to distance. It is very easy for them to just straight trending rap music. Sure, like they could easily do another version of this where it's like, uh, you know, Jersey. Or, you know, another version of it where it's like, you know, drumless or whatever. Any of the trending genres in hip-hop right now. Um, but they did, they made an active choice to kind of move away from that. And I do appreciate that. And 
they there's made no that genres. choice. There's no more genres. Yeah, and like they made that choice by paying an homage to perhaps the most important person in K-pop. So I'm like, I'm not gonna complain. You know what I mean? But like, there are other groups that have been making that homage too lately. Similar, right? To, te- to, so, to, to, to Teji? Not so Teji, but like this more boom bap sound. We heard it like Old last week. Score. Yeah. Oh, but like this yeah. sound in particular is just not a. It's not an homage to hip hop. Mm-hmm. It's an homage to no. come back home. This specifically, so you're yeah, saying yeah. this one specifically, right? This okay. one specifically, and like that's like okay. They're aware of the fact that they're K-pop and also hip hop at the same time, and that where do they go back up to? That's like. But for someone like me who's not aware of the homage, you know, it kind of sounds like oh, we're, we're just all doing boom bap right now. I you're, guess you're right? in your you're in your early thirties. You should recognize that homage, dog. Bro, I listened to K-pop you, after two thousand and eight. Yeah, you watched Spike Kids. You should know what that is. <laughs> hey, I don't know. So I don't know. So did you in the voice? That wasn't my time. Okay. I, I mean, you think I was born in nineteen? 19- okay, anyway, if, go on. Yeah, never mind. You at least get my point, though, right? I get your Where, point. I do yeah, get your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's like, for me, it's like, all right, we have like two or three boom bap ish songs over the past like, couple months. All right, right so. everybody, go listen to Come Back Home by Sateji and the Boys. It is classic. a wildly I'll put, important I'll put song. This at a, I'll put this at a tingly. Tingly? Yeah. Uh, t- I, like, tingly. I like Young Posse. Yeah. I, want them, I want this group to do well. Like, that's, 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 um, a lot of. A lot of praise on my part. Like this is one of the groups where I'm like, I hope they do well. I hope it pops off some more. They're very talented. I like their They're talented, yeah. And their mm. company, at least now, the investment is clearly there, right? They're investing in mm. them big time. They're promoting them, so it's all it's all looking good right now. All right, let's move on. Eyelit. Um, Warren reminded me to look up the name of this group. I also <laughs> looked it up because I've been calling it Illit for a while. It's Eyelit, apparently. Um, Eyelit. They released Magnetic, which is their debut. They are from B-Lift Lab. So they are under the Hype Umbrella and B-Lift Lab under the same wing that has in Hypen. And it's, and you know how when Hypen was formed through Island, this group was formed through Are You Next? TV oh, show. Okay. There's five members. There was originally six, but one girl left before they debuted. Um, mm-hmm. So the members are Yuna, Minju, Mocha, Wanhi, and Iroha. So those are the members of mm-hmm. this group. Okay. Um, This is my favorite song of the week by far. Oh, Ooh. wow. Wow. I concur. This song... Okay, number one. I'm going to address some things. A lot of people are comparing this to New Jeans. They're both under the high oh, umbrella. Really? So a lot of comparisons. Mm. Some people were hating a little bit. I think that's too far. Too far. Too far. Why are people hating? What? Yeah. I think that Guys. this group sounds more like Chill. Mono Tree in the pre Luna era. Oh. oh. Like, okay. Almost like, a, like some Electric of the Odd Circle songs, particularly. This, uh, that area. I feel like yes. we're in that area more. Yeah. I, I like a that. modernized version of mm. the meta, but of that uh-huh. style from back in the pre debut Luna days. That's what it reminds me of. Oh, that's a that's a good catch. And I like it. Right? That's what I was mm-hmm. thinking the whole time. Like, this kind of sounds like old Luna to me, which is good because old Luna was good. Um, <laughs> this the chorus of this song. You could also call this one repetitive because it kind of is. But there yeah. is something they in the repetitiveness in the sea of repetitiveness. There is substance though, and that's why this mm. song is good. Something is super earwormy about this track. They hit that kind of dreamlike thing well but they also have like the beat going on sort of and it all just kind of works together somehow and it's great okay mm. um i want to go back to something you just said um i do agree with you it's a little repetitive the chorus you said there's substance could you point to me where the substance is <laughs> i mean substance is in like something to latch on to like I- i'll listen to this one for like weeks oh okay you, 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 super attractive. I say it, it is repetitive, <laughs> right? <to> your- <laughs> <laughs> it's repetitive, but I will say that I feel like there was a little bit more intention into what parts were repeated, if that makes sense. Like for me, like that you part felt like, oh, okay, it's meant to, it's meant to be earwormy, but it's not the whole thing. Um, like, and even when they, they do repeat it, it's said a little differently. So like the first time, it's a different cadence than the second time. Yes. So I feel like I I agree. It's 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 repetitive, but it doesn't sound over, like overwhelming or not overwhelming, but like just like the same throughout. Because I feel like some some of the issues that I would say that could be there for repetition is that it's 
the same delivery, if that makes sense. So it feels very like one note. Okay, I will Resist, admit it's a little different. I will admit it sounds a mm-hmm. lot less repetitive than what Purple Kiss gave us, but I'm still gonna say this leans into the repetitiveness a little too much than I would prefer. Um, and I don't mm-hmm. think, on the other hand, I don't think it needs like a very like wildly vocal heavy chorus or anything. I don't think it needs to do mm-hmm. anything like a first half chorus of Dala Dala by any means. But however, I don't know. I wish there was a little more something to the chorus. And I do appreciate that they took the effort to like. Um, change it up a lot and like give a lot of like different variations in terms of the rhythm and there is actually a first mm. half and a second half of the chorus um, yes. the second half of the chorus becomes a, just a beat drop and then like there are these there are these like quick pauses where like the beat drops yes. the beat pauses and it's like Tarong! and that's <laughs> I, I like that kind of sound you know what I mean like that's pretty cool um, but I don't know I feel like the, uh, Maybe it's because the short the song was short, but by the time it gets to the third chorus, I was like, okay, I don't know. I I was hoping there would be a little more. Um, So I was missing that like, like 5%, you know, just like a little bit more would would have been really cool. Mm. Um, But I do agree. I do agree that this is my favorite song of the week too. It's like very cutesy. It's very dreamlike. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that the new jeans comparison comparison is more on like the aesthetic the visualness of it yeah, yeah right i yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. more or less what people are putting out i found yeah. i mean i found that interesting because so i i watch clips of the are you next show right so mm-hmm. i i was yeah. familiar. oh by the way none of us watched it so we are not oh, yeah i didn't on that i level. didn't see the whole yeah, thing let's just, I just, let's just say that out loud. i was so, aware of it i saw some clips yeah. um and i wasn't sure what route they were going to take as far as concept um i i did get to see some of the teaser videos and some of the the medley stuff that they were showing um and it's the same i wasn't sure what what general idea they wanted to take with this group interesting that they decided to go for a more like odd mystery kind of vibe to it um while still having like a very i I don't know if it's cute it's more like mm, there's a relatability to it that's what I got. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. I think I didn't. I, I didn't quite make a comparison with New Jeans because it doesn't feel like the same type of relatability that they're going for. If that makes sense. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because of their label and the association. All I, I know. Yeah. Is that as someone who was not invested in this group one bit. I'm excited about this group now. I like the sound. I'm really excited about this. I'm willing to listen to way more of this. Can we get more, please? I think that they're going to have to do a very good job of um, navigating the world where they exist, the Seraphim exists, New Jeans exists under the umbrella, right? I think as a company, they're going to have to mm. uh, toe that line very well for sure, in order for to sure. give them all separate identities. But for what I got now... I don't see either of those two groups doing this specific type of sound right now. So no. I think it kind of worked in terms of the debut. You know, well, um, you know what I will admit, though, is they don't overlap yet. But at no. the same time, I understand it's close. why. It could be yeah. close. Yeah. It yeah. could be close. Mm-hmm. It's not a Venn diagram yet, but like the circles are like. They're getting close. They're right <laughs> next Literally to each other. The concepts are like this. Right, right. right. They're right <laughs> next to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. the yeah. over there. Different different dimension over there. You could like but. insert the new jeans growth and this could have been their next music video. Right. <laughs> Straight right, up. Right, right. Like, so I, I, it's not I don't understand why people see the comparison at the same time. I mean, it's it's high. They're, I'm sure they'll figure out a way to like kind of like differentiate and separate between their multiple different identities, I mean, though, assets, as a, groups, I people, think, I think artists. this worked as a debut for sure, though. Like, it got me excited. I had no skin in the game. Um, and now they're on, the, they're on the list of things we got to watch out for. I do not know any of these kids. If you watched Are You Next and if you are a big fan of this group, uh, let us know why we should like the group or specifically who you like in this group because I, I, I don't know anyone in this group to be honest. Um, mm. Do it. I kind of like the chorus choreography too. The little bit they showed us in here, I thought it was kind of fun. It's they fun. were almost throwing a bunch of gang signs at one point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, they did it. They did it. It worked out okay. Um, <laughs> it's definitely TikTok focused though. 
for sure that's going to be all over TikTok. So. Um, overall, for me, I'm going to say this was spicy. Oh, whoa. I think this was a spicy song. Whoa. This was a little spicy for me, but yes. I, oh, man. Um, high tingly agree, for me. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Okay, but I get the spicy. Okay, I do. Okay. Yeah. Let's move to the last song. We got the Jamba Juice song. We got NTT Dream Smoothie. <laughs> they are from SM oh, Entertainment. Last three songs, ISTJ, Broken Melodies, and Candy. Um This is a this is an SM this is a song, right? <laughs> yeah. Do elaborate. <laughs> is it a song? This is like when you go to Jamba Juice. And they have that wheat grass on the counter. What? You know that grass huh? you could add it to your smoothies. Okay, I'll be honest. I've never been to Jamba Juice. You're gonna have to do. Oh, okay. Explain. They, yeah. They, they used to have this like. Okay, let me let me make sure I'm not gaslighting myself into remembering. <laughs> what is wheat grass? What? Yeah. Did they just straight so, up put marijuana in your like? No, no, it's wheat grass. <laughs> it's look up Jamba Juice grass, and you could add it to your shake. It's a. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Why am I adding grass? Well, that's what this song is. It's as if they added grass <laughs> to the song and it made it all oh, bitter and weird. Oh. Interesting. Okay, I mean, I don't get the analogy, but I, I mean, again, I'll I've say, never I'm been to Jamba. I'm just saying that the smoothie wasn't that good, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. That's not like okay. 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 All it's, right. I'm literally just gonna. This spell is too it out. green. Too green of a smoothie. Too, too much salad. Oh, stop! Stop focusing on the grass. Too guys. much. <laughs> <laughs> good. All I'm saying is, we went from candy, which was an interesting HOT cover. Right? Yeah. We went to Broken Standard, Dreams. Yeah. Which was more of a standard NCT dream kind of high teen upbeat vibe. Right? And I, I thought that song was great. Mm. And then we did ISTJ, which was more kind of that like NCT aesthetic song. You know? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. more of like mm -hmm. a you think of NCT, this could be one of the songs. Um and now we have this smoothie song. And it's just like can we can we like shove more innuendos into a three minute song? <laughs> like, can we, oh. is it possible? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, okay. <laughs> I think right off the bat, the the vibe was very interesting because it reminded me a lot of Post Malone. Wow, so like that's the beat. <laughs> they have a horse, Anita, in this music video. They rent oh, the they do. Horse. Just like Post Malone. Just like Post Malone. <laughs> exactly. No, but I feel like. My in general though, like in general, I feel like the song, the song is supposed to make sense. What made it kind it's of odd for me, sense. what made it odd for me was the choice of smoothie as the one word we were gonna repeat as, as the English word, as right? the word, as the right? Word. Like that's the hook, that's the title, that's that's the one catchy thing. Because I, I think it's such an interesting word in English that even even when I'm hearing the song. As they say it throughout the song, I start feeling like it's not even a word anymore. Like it sounds <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's the it's the it's the door effect. Just say yes. the word door. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a stupid word. Door. I like the word door. I don't know. Maybe it's just you me. Keep saying it. Door. Or as door. As an English door. speaker, it sounds odd, but it was an interesting choice. Um, I'm just glad it wasn't a chant rap chorus. Like, uh, oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. You know what I mean. Like, um, I'll be honest with you. I like everything about the song besides the chorus. Oh my! You, okay. Well, no, the, the vocals are really good. Yeah, the like parts are fantastic. Like, I, I don't think. Out. Yeah, I don't think Mar rap. I don't think Mark rapped, but the the rap was good too. No, he he rapped. Oh, did he? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, the <laughs> rap. The, the, the rap into the pre-chorus <laughs> is extremely strong on I, the song. I meant the ones near the end. Oh. Ah. Anyway, yeah, I mean, back no, to you when you it's so it's a solid performance. I think what l what I would have liked more of was the more vocal heavy top line like melodies cuz I think the one instance, I think it, the bridge has it too, but within the verses, the one instance is like at the 1 minute ni 19 second mark with Hechan and it's more of an R&B switch. And I oh mean it's not it's not unusual. They've done something like that before, but Bro, man, they, what do you mean they've done that it? before? They do that every song. <laughs> okay, but for this song in particular, it, I feel like uh, 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 I could breathe again when I heard this part because the rest of the song is very like low. It's very, I don't know, like 
they, they I feel like there could have been more of a balance of breaking up this very like low heavy atmosphere like in the in the beat because the beat is very low the rap is very low the the chorus is very low and then you get breaks in between where you get the vocals i don't know i felt like maybe if that was a little bit more balanced okay i mean if i i felt very sold on the lowness of the cor- of the whole yeah. arrangement oh, I like that too. yeah and how bottom heavy it is it's yeah, it yeah, gives yeah, it a yeah. lot of yeah, weight okay. and a lot of like oomph to it you know it's, it's, they're not mm. boys they're not men. A girth. They're men, you know, like this. Okay. <laughs> so they're going for now. <laughs> like that goes back to what Doug was saying. Like they're not the same kids that were doing broken melodies or the other NCT oh, no. Dream songs if, anymore. If you liked Hot Sauce, though, you might like this one. To be fair, what? This is very different. This is very different <laughs> from Hot Sauce. Think, what are you talking about? I think it's different than Hot Sauce, but if you're into this kind of like weird ass chorus, this this might be your alley. Oh, really? All right. I don't. I don't. <laughs> agree with that maybe maybe because i think both songs are kind of bad <laughs> if that's all i'm doing so you're saying if you like bad music you're gonna like this song no <laughs> no, if no, you, no, no, no. no i'm not saying if you like bad music i'm saying if you like songs that i don't like it's different i might oh, like bad songs oh, okay this might be more of <laughs> you your know what taste. I'm saying? yeah uh. that was a nice save doug that was a nice save <laughs> it's the truth though like to be honest how do you guys Some uh, songs you guys told me are so good i'm like oh, okay apparently they're good how do you guys feel about the uh the music video it was a lot cool. of weird. There's, they're like fighting a strawberry, and at one point there's this scene. <laughs> I don't remember where, but like there's like they're fighting. There's like there's a strawberry all yeah. of a sudden, right? Yeah. And uh-huh. well, they they a couple seconds later, one guy has like red on his face, and I thought, oh, it's blood or something, right? Yeah. It's but a then strawberry. This giant amount of jam just comes from the top right before <laughs> the end of the shot, and I'm like, if that was blood, half of his brain just came uh... out. Like it's just, it was a really weird shot. Um, See, that's what happens when you play Fruit Ninja. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, yeah. Fruit Ninja. <laughs> this kind of does remind me of Fruit Ninja. <laughs> what is <laughs> literally yeah. that? They're slicing yeah, fruit in yeah. the air. I feel like, I don't know, maybe it was an interesting vibe. I feel like the music video had like grainy quality to it. There oh, were yeah. like a lot of like mono, well, no, not all monochromatic, but like very white, black, red. Like that, those were the main colors that were coming and going. It was very Each toned shot. down. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Like, I really liked the set where they have, like, big um, screens with, like, radio, like, x-ray type of imagery, photography of the fruit. Oh, like yeah. the cross section? Very interesting. Very modern. It kind of felt like the take. Matrix a little, too, this music video. Yeah, I don't know yeah. Why. Oh, well, the, yeah, the swords, the fighting. Also, they're they're fighting shots. those two white dudes who have like I don't know if they're white, but they're fighting the guys who are like whited out with the white yeah. beards and the white clothing the, and the white hair. The old, yeah. just similar to the twins in Matrix, right? That was so. my favorite cameo. Like I was like, can you get yeah. more I two like old men fighting in NCT music videos going forward, please? Like more that, fight scenes. Yeah, like that was pretty dope. No, yeah, I, and I th- I think for me, I just don't like it, it. Comes out to I just don't like the chorus, right? But there are so, but the rest mm. of this song, I feel like it's a shame because I thought some of these other sections were just so strong, and I'm like, oh, if we just got the chorus right, this would have been a banger, you know. I'll be honest with you. While I don't think the chorus particularly <laughs> was my favorite kind of chorus, at the same time, I do think they made the right creative choice. And I don't think there's a better choice for them to do it. This kind of like sound, um, and a lot of it okay. comes down to whether mm-hmm. you like this sound or you don't. Um, True. If, if anything, love it or hate it. Right, yeah. right. Like if anything, I see where Ani is coming from with the R and B changes, but at the same time, I didn't like those because I, I felt like they took me out of the song a little too much. Really? Yeah, I was like, I don't need a. Br- this a, a song's only three minutes, Anita. I don't need a break. Just give me more of that. I needed bass. a bass. <laughs> give me that fat eight oh eight bass. <laughs> fat 808 smoothie fat um look uh, okay. uh tingly this is a tingly. tingly i'll put it on the playlist tingly. i've been playing i've been running back cyberpunk recently this really fits like the vibe oh, sometimes yeah. Oh. oh yeah uh i remember i remember what i was gonna say um i think i so doug was like they're moving away from the classic nct dream aesthetic yeah mm. And it kind of, it's kind of obvious, right? NCT 
the other guys are now here doing that thing. Wish and NCT Wish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that's that's kind of true in terms of progression of the group, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like NCT Dream was meant to always be the young kids that are like youngins. Yeah, like rookies, and then you know build them, build their popularity here, and then plug them into the main group. That was supposed to be the purpose of it, but now that's not happening. Uh, they gotta move on and do the classic K-pop thing where this is their fancy, maybe you know what I mean, like where they change it up. You yeah, know I feel like they kind of started doing that beforehand, but yeah, maybe you, more you know, heavily now. You mm-hmm. know how I know the generation shift is here? Um, on Running Man this past weekend, right? One of the games they had to do was they played songs from iChart Top 100, oh. and they had to like name the song. Okay, and like mm-hmm. they people all everyone there knew like NCT Dream, NCT uh, not Dream NCT Wish. And they knew like to us and things like that. Like you just suck knew who to us was, you know, bro. Everyone knows who to us is right now. No, no, it's just like to me, like they're, they're, they're all of a sudden, everyone knows all the new groups, right? So it's like it clearly feels like something's changed a little in my head. Mm. Mm. Like like general people, general entertainment people now just start name dropping these rookie boy groups all of a sudden, and I'm like the switch. Uh. You know how you know how I said a couple years ago. The generations might start shifting once we start having new boy groups. It kind of feels like that to me now. Like, it's really establishing the the change now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, the general public's connecting back. We're not going to have a discussion about generations, guys. Do not have another discussion. (laughs) Guys, this is the uh, 12th generation. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. 12.5. Yeah, but that's the songs this week. Other songs was Lucy, The Knight Who Can't Die, and The Silk Cradle. It's a, like an anime music video, straight up anime. Oh, wow. Okay. We had the new six. They used to be known as um, PNX. PNX, but now they're the new six. They released Fuego and then Ensign released <laughs> yes. Funk Jam. So those were the songs. Uh, let's go to Spice King. Last week on episode 274, Chunga's Ini Mini featuring AT's Hongjun picked up its second crown. Eligible for the Hall of Spice, by the way. Oh, boy. Second place, day six. Welcome to the show. Third place, NCT Wish with Wish. Uh, the new candidates are the four songs we covered today. Purple Kiss, BBB, Young Posse XXL, Eyelet, Magnetic, and then NCT Dream Smoothie. I got a chart here, right? Um, Eyelet, first place. You gotta. Nice. Chunga, come around on the song more. Second place. I'll put it in second this week. And in third place, if I think about all of these songs, which one's my next favorite, I'll mm. put the Day 6 song. In oh, wow. That's my chart. Day wow. 6. Okay. Anita. That, that's your cue. Uh, yeah. Um, I had a bit of what a is this reaction? Time. <laughs> okay. I, I concur. First place, Eyelid. Um, wow. I don't know. I really liked this, this sound for them. I miss this sound with the girl groups. I'm glad it's coming back. And also, um, the music video was very interesting. I wanted to shout out the shots where they had, like, the dark silhouette against, like, the sunset in the windows shot. It was very... It doesn't happen very often. It's, like, two shots, but it's really pretty. Shout out to that. Um, That's in first place. Second place, I also have Chunga. Eeny, meeny. Um... Yeah, I've. I want to also shout out. She was on the seasons right with Ihyori. Yes, she did a performance of "Gotta Go." Oh man, oh, is that a great song? I, I felt so nostalgic. Great performance, like great, great performer, Chunga. I'm so glad she's back. Um, the the tough spot is third place. Um, I think. This week, I will give it to. I will give it to. NCT Dream Smoothie. There we wow. go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I'm hesitant. I mean, it's it's taking a while for me to get used to this. There are some really good parts, and then there are some parts that I'm not 100 percent convinced. But it's very interesting. The music video is very cool i'm waiting to see the live performances to see what the full choreography looks like but i'll keep it in third for now all right man i'm gonna get a, a lot of hate for this, my uh, with my chart today um oh no let's uh start with third place i have xxl young posse 
<laughs> nice. Uh, here, here's why, right? I appreciate that they are doing something different and they're committed to it. Um, and for the most part, they're executing really well too. I, I again, I don't really like the changeups at all. But besides that, I have zero to little complaints about the rest of the song. Um, music videos weird. That, weird better than boring you know what i mean like sure go for it um so yeah uh mm. double xl young xxl young pasty third place oh third okay third place yeah uh taking me to second place is put an end in your friends oh. by v friends v oh I, yes i like that wow. song yeah okay. what are you gonna do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just, I, I, again, I like the beat. I like the build up. V is a great vocalist. Um, video is really dope too. Um, it would have been first place, but I can't deny first place. It's actually Ini Mini by Chungha with Hong Jung. I, I don't need to elaborate mm-hmm. on that one, do I? Mm-hmm, there you mm-hmm. go. Nah, there said, you go. Enough yeah. said. Big Chungus takes it again. <laughs> um, so just like Nation on the GoTo Gang, they voted third place with fifty-eight points from them. Young Posse XXL. There we go. Second place, 59, one point higher, getting three points. Day six, welcome to the show. Oh, ooh. Nice. And in first place with 69 points, 10 more. It's Chang'a Ini Mini featuring AT's Hong Jun. Oh, does that mean? As a result. Does that mean? Third place this week. Day uh-huh. six, welcome to the show with four points. That is in third place. Second place is Eyelet. With 10 points, um, Magnetic. And in first place, with 16 points, entering the Hall of Spies, picking up Let's its go. third crown. Chunga Ini Mini featuring AT's Hong Jun. Let's go. Boom. Nice. Nice. Nice, 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 uh, nice, it, nice. It's joining the Hall of Spice class of 2024, along with Nmix Dash and La Seraphim Easy. And that is it right now. All right. Nice. Finally, we're at show winners. Anita, hit us with them. Yeah, we have a couple here. Um, as we mentioned, to us is still popping off. They got another win with plot twist. Five total wins for them on Inkigayo. And then we have Highlight with Body. They won on the show. And Music Bank. So two wins for them. Then we have V with Friends. Um, one on M Countdown. First win for him. And then Tempest with Lighthouse. Also another first win on Show Champion. Man, Anita, you're really a really a pro podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. okay. I'm looking at the script, right? Like uh, the, the script, we have a script every week that Doug writes out. It says, uh, TWS <laughs> plot twice. Little typo. Yeah. Plot twice. <laughs> <laughs> I improvised. I improvised. Where did you call me um, from? <laughs> one funny thing about highlight, formerly known as beast. Oh yeah. Mm. There's, they were on knowing bros on and young name. Oh, they really? talked oh, nice. about one of their legendary stages. They had a rain stage where at the end of the last chorus, it rained on top of them. Ooh. Oh, no. Just go that off. It's really funny, the story about that stage. Um, they look completely <laughs> drenched by the end of their performance. It's kind of funny. Oh, man. But um, that, that ends part one. So we talk episode 275. We'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutalk or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutalk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. Hey, we are back at it with part two of Soldier Talk episode 275. We're going to talk about some news and events from the past week. All right, first one. Um, This one was announced. It was not denied by any parties. So okay. we'll, we'll just leave it at mm. that. Twice's Geo and skeleton athlete Yoon Sung Bin have reportedly been dating for one year. Uh, the couple Ooh. is said to have met through an acquaintance and gradually uh, got together. So people, a lot of people are like, who the F is this guy? Right? Who is dating my god Ji Hyo? Right? Like who, who, who is this guy? 
why why isn't it me was people were saying but oh, um <laughs> yun sung bin if you don't know he won a gold medal at like an olympics like eight years ago or something like that for the sports skeleton and he went pretty viral at the time for being pretty good looking and he wore an iron man helmet so he was known as korean mm. korea's iron man um since then he's retired from doing skeleton and he's been kind of doing some variety lately. He was on Physical 100. I think he placed in the top 10 over there. And then also, um, he's just been on random variety shows here and there. So he is in the entertainment industry right now. Nice. Kind of makes Congrats. sense. They both love to work out, right? Mm. Like, mm. he's jacked out of his mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good for them. Hope it's going well. For them. I can tell Gio has a consistent taste. I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Really? What, okay. What are the similarities between Yoon Sung Bin yeah. and uh and Kang Denya? Because one man is weighs like three times the amount of the other. Something about the face, you know? Something, something about the face. Something yeah. about something about the facial mm. features. You know what I mean? No, just me. Okay. Fine, just okay. me. Move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, best, best of luck. Uh, well, number one, oh, uh, we'll have to find out if it really gets denied at any point. But best of luck oh, to I this couple. Um, if it's true, well. congratulations. If true, yes. Yes. The next one, okay, we got three court cases. Um, oh boy, there's mm. the following two have some like essay warnings a little bit. So if you're uncomfortable, skip ahead. Mm. Just want to say, but this one does not. Um, Luna's true, right? So she is still in court versus Blackberry Creative. <sighs> so after losing to Chu in a court regarding her exclusive contract, then losing again in their appeal to the high court. Blockberry Creative intends to see the legal battle until the end by making a second appeal and bringing it to the Korean Supreme Court. The Supreme what? Court. Yeah. Is it that serious? Oh, okay. Yeah, they 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 t they're taking it to the Supreme Court. It's not they intend to. They did. They're taking it there. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. Oh God. They have better lost things twice to do. In this. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> and by the time they finish this lawsuit again, her actual contract length might be done. You know, it's just really stupid. Um, Bro, by the time they're done with this lawsuit, like, I, like I, I'm gonna. Chu might be retired at that point, right? Like by the time they're done. Um, <laughs> Good lord, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be. Rate. I'm gonna be old. Gonna be ready to die. It's gonna be uh, like. Okay, next one. It's Omega X News. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, Sa no. trigger warning. Trigger warning. Um, Omega X released pictures and texts refuting allegations mm. that member Hui Chan had sexually assaulted the group's former CEO, Kang, mm. Kang Song Hee. So she is the lady that last year was seen abusing the kids and yelling at them in public, right? right? It's this lady. Okay. They had a lawsuit. Mm. I'm pretty sure they lost. And even her husband is now suing her for something, which is weird. Oh. But that's happening too. But okay. she came out and said, like, you know, one of the kids was like sexually assaulting me. Something like that, right? That was her allegation. Um, hmm. It came out, essentially, the group released photos of cacao chats and other logs showing that. And they said that this CEO, Kang Sung Hee, used to make them drink a ton in front of her. Mm. And then she would more or less coerce them to inappropriately touch her and things what? like that. Like she was being a predator towards them. And yeah, that's that's kind of what is going on. <laughs> And so she would also up. film. She would all after she made them touch her. She would film them while what? they're passed no, out no. and stuff. And there's like Is logs she, of it. Like here's the picture on the bottom. I'm not gonna open it, but there's like to court. <laughs> probably. Is but, get yeah, oh, this is just gross, man. Come on. Uh, so, so she was. So according to her, she was sexually assaulted. According to the that the, their side, Omega X's side, they're saying this woman was forcing us to do these horrible things. Um, mm. and she was forcing us to get drunk, and then after. We got drunk and passed out. She would take photos and like make up bigger stories about what happened. Hmm. That's just disgusting, man. Oh my god! Like, what is? And he also said, like, I did not do anything forceful to her, but he did. But they did say that she she did force them to touch her. So he's saying I did touch uh, her, but I did not do it do so anything crazy, or anything like that. Okay, yeah. this is like really fucked up on multiple levels, right? On one level, you are claiming there was a sexual assault and like it was not the case, and then the yeah, second layer of it is that oh boy, it was actually the other way around where the lady, yeah. where the CEO lady, she's like was. forcing herself upon them more or less, yeah, and getting them drunk and. <sighs> And taking pictures of them and making up stuff. Yeah, I don't. A mess. 
We don't. Uh, I hope. I, I hope they. She gets some repercussions from this because it's even worse now. It's it's getting out. Jail time. So there's that one. We do have jail time on the final story. So oh boy. former oh. Dai uh, member Somi sentenced oh, to 18 yeah. months in prison for making oh, false accusation, uh, accusations of yeah. sexual assault. So there's nuance to this one. It, this one is yeah. very controversial, and I can 100% see why. So let, let's talk about the case a little okay. bit, right? So what happened was she previously filed a complaint with the police mm-hmm. against the CEO, alleging that he attempted to sexually assault her in January 2023, right? The mm-hmm. case was dismissed, but she appealed the dismissal, which then led the police to review the video footage. So, mm-hmm. more or less, um, the court is saying that the footage shows that she was lying and she made it up, right? That's what the court is saying. But the weird thing about it is that it seems that they are more or less imprisoning her, not because they can 100% prove that um, that she made up the claims, but it's because she can't prove wait let me let me let me frame this the correct way Mm -hmm. she did not give them enough evidence that she did it and that's why she's in trouble Mm. like there's two things here right i okay let let me try to let me think about this for a second because i don't i don't want to say it incorrectly but it seems Mm -hmm. like they are imprisoning her not because they found out it didn't happen but because she couldn't prove that it happened Huh. Can I can do I add get, a, do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. Can, can like, I add a little bit to this? Because she is officially uh, charged with this uh, for something we call bugotre, which is tra- best translation of, of it is false accusation law. And yes. the what the court has made the judgment of is that this lady has um, is falsely accusing the man. Yeah. That's that's all. That's mm. that's it. Um, a part of that might be that there is not enough she, evidence. She was. She wasn't able to bring off enough right. evidence to prove her claims. Uh, another part of it is that from the judge's perspective that there is ill intent to either ruin this man's life or take his money, whatever, to, you know, to, mm. for personal gains. She has, you know, filed this, co- you, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the focus is a little larger than just lack of evidence in, my, in, my, in the way I'm reading it right now. Okay. There's also a discussion around the fact that she got 18 months where people who actually do commit sexual assault sometimes don't get over 18 months. That's a big debate that's going that's, on online. I'm a bit surprised by that. Right? That's a big discussion where it's a double standard. Mm. Um, yeah, that's another conversation we need to have. Um, we're, not the, we're not the people qualified to have that discussion, but it is definitely something that people are uh, hashing out online for sure, mm-hmm. which I could completely see why you would want to have that discussion. Because people yeah. wanted to bring in like some of the burning sun dudes got like barely that much, and yeah, she's and getting that, that was much. Way worse. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Kind of an unfortunate situation. Um, I think that's 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 all we got for that. All right, let's move on to better things, uh, happier things. Let's pivot. Let's palate cleanse here. G idols okay. Yugi to make solo debut in April. Oh, oh, Ooh. that's exciting. Nice. More and more, the more behind the scenes content of G Idol I watch, the more and more I realize that Yugi's like a top five most funny, interesting person <laughs> in K pop. Like, just in terms of being a personable person, like just great personality, mm. yeah. she's up there for sure. And I'm very excited for this um, for this solo debut. Ever since she debuted, we always said, man, that girl has some inter- like an interesting voice. Her great. voice, her tone. Yeah. Now, personality. That one's too. there. Next one, CLC Sunyi to leave Cube Entertainment after nine years. Um, it's kind of just more fallout wow. uh, um, of like Cube's failure to manage CLC. Um, mm-hmm. People always talk about like some of the CLC songs like Helicopter. People love talking about that song still. <laughs> uh, I, that was a banger, what dude. A song. Um, I miss CLC. I thought the group was a lot of fun, but what it is. Uh, next one, Lollapalooza. Ooh. 2024. We have one K-pop act headlining and then two more participating. Ooh. You look on this left side of headliners. Ooh. What is right Ooh. here? Drake Kids Ooh. is headlining Lollapalooza. Wow. And then if you That's look big. over here, Ive Ooh. is right there. Ooh. Ive. And then if you look somewhere else, I don't know where this one is. Vicha is going to. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh. I don't remember where it was on this, but I'm like 95% sure. Let me, let me make I see let it. Me, I see it. I see it. You uh, see it? You see it? Leftmost. Right here, next right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I found it. Yeah, Vicha. 
Those are the three K pop acts going to Lollapalooza. Nice. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. People were kind of pissed. They're kind of saying Itzy should go instead of Icha, but you know. I mean, I, it it kind of makes sense that if Icha would go. They're more American leaning than that's he is. Hey, look at this. Yeah. Stray Kids is on the same list as like the Killers, Blink One Eighty Two, SZA's, Tyler the Creator, Skrillex. Like that's kind of crazy, yeah, right. bro. Just notice that they're ahead of Skrillex and Melody Martinez. Like that's crazy, <laughs> right? Right, and then Ive is over here. They're on the same wow. line as Kesha. Do and Vince Staples. Additionally, here's a weird thing. So Ive is touring right now, right? Right. In the U.S. Right. Um, they went. I think they were performing in Houston or something like that, and they took mm-hmm. pictures with Anne Hathaway. What? She oh. was at the, the Hawks. The Atlanta. I think they're in Atlanta. They're, yeah, and she took pictures with them. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll bring up the picture real That's quick. Cool. I, was, I saw it pop up on my, my feed and I was like, really? Look, there's Eugene and wow. goddamn Anne Hathaway. Oh, wow. And Liz. They're all in this photo. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and people were like, they're wearing basically the same outfit. That's what we're also it's saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Ooh, that is not on my bingo checklist. No, for no, this is not <laughs> something I expected at all this year. This year. And apparently, from what I've been um, reading up on, they said this IVE tour is amazing, is what people are saying. Mm. Really? They said because it's their first world tour, they're trying super hard, and they said it's really good. So, that's wow. Good, that's good. There is that. All right. Bye-bye to Lollapalooza. Bye-bye to Anne Hathaway. Next one. All pre-sales tickets for Plave's first offline concert were sold out Ooh. in 10 minutes. Bro. Offline. Wow. Okay. Wait, and, so uh, do we get to find out what they look like? No, I That's could show I'm you wondering. what the concert looks like. So, yeah, Warren, okay, okay. mute me for one second while I mute this. Uh, okay. Oh. We're good. So, that didn't work as intended, but right, that's whatever. Fine. I whatever. played it for one second. <laughs> so, apparently, the way it works is they show them on the screen, and then they say it, the experience is more like watching anime. So it's like a v- it's like one of those Vocaloid concerts. I see. That's what they're saying. It's like in person. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, I what? mean, if it's hey, if, regardless of what you feel works. about it, it's it sold works, out in it ten minutes. So people are very excited <laughs> yeah. about this. There's a demand. So, there we go. And I think one of the members is dealing with vocal cord nodules, though. So that's a oh, bit no. of a shame. Oh, no. We'll have to see about that. But hey, ten minutes. They're cooking right now. Um, wow. Next thing. So we're having Cards BM, right? He's having uh-huh. after the after party BM first Ooh. concert tour. Ooh. The first twenty one and over show where there's no so- and there's no cell phones allowed. Ooh. What? Oh man, what does that mean? <laughs> crazy shit. They think. Ooh. What does that mean? Ooh, we. <laughs> there's it's twenty one and over and no cell phones. Boneless event. <laughs> they confiscate your cell phones? No, no. The way it works is um, when you enter the, from what I understand, when you enter the um, the theater or wherever you're going, yeah. they have these bags that you put your phone in and it zips up and it clocks. And the only way to get the phone oh. out is when you're leaving, they have a scanner thing to unlock it. And then you get your phone. What? Oh, wow. There's like a technology like that. Yeah. All right. Wow, well, you you still have this. your phone on you. Right, but right. You, can't you use just it. can't access it. Yeah, you can't oh. access it. Oh man, time to pull out my Apple Vision Pro to uh, film the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the he's party. going to Los Angeles, Dallas, Chicago, New York, Atlanta, and Washington D.C. This is gonna be wild. We're gonna have to hear some stories uh, from what happens here. Twenty-one plus, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Twenty-one plus. No cell phone. No one can record what we're gonna do. Dang. That's crazy. <laughs> so there's that, and then finally, if you are a fan. Um, of secret number, there are t- they're doing like this thing where they're gonna come to the tour in the U.S. Right? Oh, mm-hmm. but you're gonna have to like vote for who you want to come. Sorry, what? Like where you want them to go? Oh, you're gonna have to vote. Okay, oh. between the cities. So it's L.A., Minneapolis, oh, okay. Orlando, Seattle, Phoenix, Denver, San Francisco, Houston, New York, Chicago, Charlotte, and Atlanta. But the weird thing is, you're gonna have to vote, pledge for your city. You have to pay to pledge for your city. <laughs> What? Okay. So we're funding this, maybe. <laughs> not, not, Nita, remove the maybe. <laughs> oh. Let me let me see what happens. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, it's non refundable. Okay. No, no. System. If you're okay, here here we go. If you're if the city you pledge your ten bucks to wins, you get ten bucks off your ticket. Okay. 
Okay. And if your city was not selected in round one, you can either request a refund before round two ends or keep your pledge towards the, the future rounds. So you apparently you don't lose your money anyway. And if your city does not get selected by the end of the final round, you will automatically get refunded. So I think this is more a way to gauge interest. Okay, okay. So okay. you put like a $10 deposit, like I'd go if it was in New York. And then if they do it, mm. you get 10 bucks off towards the ticket. Okay. I wonder. I wonder how that works in practice, though. Right. We will see. Well, I'm yes. thinking about the yeah. people who are going to spend two thousand dollars by using no, no, two hundred no. pledges. It's one pledge per city per account, unless you're making more accounts. You, in somebody's yeah. going to game the system, Doug. Let's be honest. But who's going to spend like two k to get like two hundred? Actually, no. That's not even that many, dude. That's not even two k is only like two hundred votes. I dude, two hundred votes may. I don't know how big the secret number show the fandom is, but hey, like two hundred votes might be but big I, enough. Just something I wanted to sh- uh, I wanted to let you all know about because I'd yeah. never seen something like this That's before. Pretty, I had yeah. seen where they were like pick the city or something, vote for the city, but I'd never right. seen this system with like money. Yeah, remember like when that. remember when Pitbull went to Alaska? Yeah, because he, <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He promised to go to whatever it is, and then they like four chan like. Came together to send them to Alaska, and he actually went. And she went. Like that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So yeah, I'm just saying this is great in theory. Uh, but okay. I don't know. In terms of the, that's all the news. In terms of the music mm-hmm. next week, we have Reseen is having a debut via the Muse Entertainment, Ampers in One, which is FNC's boy new boy group, Boa Davici, a group called Candy Shop, which is Brave Brave's new group that's oh, gonna boy. apparently replace mm-hmm. Brave Girls. Mm-hmm. We have Eunice debut via Universe Ticket, which was another one of those competition shows. Oh, yes, we have yes, Tan. Yes. We have the Artemis debut, which is Adai Circle plus Kijin and Hassel. That's the group. It's those five. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have um, BTS J Hope. We have Bang Young Gook, formerly of BAP. We have oh, yes. Baby Monster. We have the Lucas debut. We have oh, QWER. And we have TXT. Oh, oh this boy. is high key stack. Packed. Yeah. Packed. It'll probably be like, you have to cover TXT. You got to cover Baby Monster. You probably have to cover J-Hope. You probably have to cover Artemis, right? Oh, there we go. That's it. Those four. That's pro- that's most likely oh, it. We're skipping Boa. <laughs> we're skipping Davichi. Skipping QWR. Oh, there's Skip the, the criminal. Photo. Um, yeah, so that is the end of the K-pop section of episode 275. After a short break, we'll be having a uh, World Cup on the best weapons to use during a zombie apocalypse. So if you, for some reason, are interested in our opinions on that, uh, stay tuned. Well, we'll see you guys then. Bye bye, everyone. Three, two, one. And here's an extra special shout out to all of our Fiesta Patreons on Patreon.com. Bagel. Charles. Cotton Ball. Delmonic. Irv Tron, Gogu Mama, Honey Pools, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniels, NJ Parks, Tear, Siu Sumi. And thank you for joining Soja Talk, your weekly shot of K pop. Special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Air Day, Koala, Max, No Bias Nuda, Tuggles, and Wolf297. back at it with the after show um what are we doing warren we're doing something stupid today but what uh it? we got a best zombie apocalypse weapon world cup uh we have 16 weapons we're gonna pick the best weapon there is in a world cup style bracket style um fun fact we actually did this topic a long long time ago did we yeah we did like years like a year two years ago Bro, i don't know how long we've done this podcast we've done it at some point um <laughs> 
Oh. Here, quick review of the last time we did it. Um, the winner was a gun, but it's really loud and the zombies will come your way. The really, second, I have a, the I second, have a com- yeah. Oh, well, I have a completely different opinion now. Go. The second winner mm-hmm. is a meat beater, like the ha- meat hammer, you know. Oh, okay. The third winner <laughs> was kimchi, but it's an infinite ammo kimchi. Wait, wait, wait! We should review this after, Warren, so that we don't sway our. Or did you pick new weapons? Voting. Completely all new sixteen oh. weapons. Don't oh, worry. Amazing. No overlap. Okay. Um, okay. so, like, we don't have the obvious ones, like guns or, like, baseball bats. Oh, no, uh, it's gonna be hard, then. No motor or dying attack over here. No soup ladle. I know we got a lot of soup ladle fans over here, but, hey, you know. So, Anita and I wanted to have some context before we start this, so we were gonna yes. say, what kind of zombies? Are they, like, Romero slow zombies? Are they walking dead? They can run and hoard pretty fast zombies? Are they day Z zombies where they're, like, on crack? Like, what kind mm-hmm. of zombies? We've decided to, like, they're walking dead zombies. You know, they can move pretty quickly. They form hordes. They decay. That kind of zombies, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I, I've never seen Walking Dead, so you'll have to fill me in really? if I, you know, have you any weird really details here and there. Do you, but... want a, do you want a fun zombie fact? Sure. <laughs> sure. If zombies ever it. attack and you're sheltering in your home, one of the main things you should do is destroy your staircase and set up a ladder instead. Oh, the zombies okay. can make it upstairs, but they cannot make it up a ladder. Isn't that kind of smart? That's smart. I learned that in a book I read during college called The Zombie Survival Guide. It's <laughs> written by Max Brooks. It sold over a million copies. And hit, ironically, the author's dad is Mel Brooks, the theater playwright. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Oh, so check out that book. It's, it's good. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's actually really interesting. All right, folks, are you ready? Yes. yes. Here we go. Round one, round of 16s. We got a machete versus a shovel. Uh, now, with the oh. machete, it comes with a grandma. You must protect <laughs> the grandma. grandma? <laughs> machete grandma? Okay. Machete grandma. Maybe the machete grandma is really strong. Like, that grandma looks really strong in this picture. I'm not going to lie. She, she's jacked. She's got, yeah, low key. <laughs> wait, so, wait, machete must okay. protect grandma? These are two of the best weapons for zombies. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. yeah, high tier good weapon. ones. Because when you think about if I have to kill the zombie, the main issue is I don't want to be loud and get more zombies to come here. Right. Fair, fair. That's one of the main issues you deal with Delph. when you actually think about this. Mm-hmm. The number two is, can this weapon break a skull? Because traditionally zombies, you break the, the brain, you damage the brain, they die, right? That's okay. how we generally see zombies. Both of these are kind of good at that. Oh, how would you more clarification on the grandma part yeah grandma that's the wild what part. does that mean the machete comes with the grandma so like the grandma it's, it's has not, to use the machete is it my grandma or is it someone else's grandma it's a very nice grandma who will make you nice chocolate Anita, chip cookies you gotta protect that just, her that just made the machete even better we have a meat shield now <laughs> no. I said you have to protect the grandma <laughs> just, so much easier. Protect her. <laughs> you, know, okay. you know what the you know what this really comes down to if we just take the machete at face value and the shovel at face value not thinking about the grandma right independent of the grandma yeah. the shovel after we bash in like five to ten zombies heads I think it's gonna get dented and all mangled up whereas that machete shovel? yeah yeah the shovel Aww. it's not the strongest thing ever whereas the machete because it's way sharper and it probably goes into heads much quicker, mm. we could probably keep sharpening it, and I think you'd be more reliable in the long run. Yeah. But like, then does this mean that now you're worrying about a grandma, grandma now? That's now we gotta add the grandma. But like, now we, uh. look at that grandma. She looks like a strong, capable grandma. You know what I mean? Like, if anything, okay. she's a teammate. You know what? If the zombies don't get her, you know what will get her? Father time. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Machete. <laughs> Machete. Uh, machete's better. Also, protecting grandma would be like more interesting. What, okay. Think? I think that's a better. I think it's better. We're gonna, we're gonna go for a plot uh driven story with machete and we're gonna machete. protect the grandma. Machete. All right, round two. We got a broomstick versus a sword. Do we have wow, is there a grandma with a sword? Please say no. That's spelled right. so interestingly. Grandma does not come with a sword. <laughs> this is- How did you so weird. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> oh, a uh, typo. Yeah. <laughs> sword is oh, much better. Oh. See, but like isn't the-, the sword like a machete, but minus the grandma now? The thing is, like, the sword yeah. is just heavy. A sword's heavy, guys. Like, you got to think about that. Like, no, how- swords are actually lighter than you think. 
Like, I... Okay, trust mm. me. If I wasn't a biology major, I was going to do history with the focus on what? Like, warfare? Okay. Like, that, wow, I don't know really? if you guys do this. Yeah, that's one no. of my interests. Watch out, this is not. new. Yeah, you yeah. Making shit up for this world No, I'm now. not. You could ask, like, my family. <laughs> they know I'm a huge history person. Okay. Like, wow. I spend every night on YouTube watching, like, war documentaries and stuff oh, like wow. that. Okay. Yeah. So, actual, like, big great swords. That, like the British and the Germans used back in the day, yeah. like what you think of, yeah, they yeah. weigh under 10 pounds, they're only five to seven pounds. Oh, oh, it's much lighter than you think it is. That's okay, like it's surprising, but that's that's honestly the truth. Well, I mean, if you well, put it that cool way, the sword. swords, yeah, swords OP now. Like, I I only put it yes. in because it's had to be super heavy. No, um, it's like it, it's not, it's not that heavy, and these are like, like. Here, here's here's one example. I'm reading on a historical website, right? They said right a single-handed sword, a one-handed sword, which was 38 yes. inches, so over three three feet. It weighs mm-hmm. only three pounds. Wow. Two-handed Whoa. sword from Germany weighed seven pounds, and it, it's like it's like a big ass sword. Okay. However, a broomstick. <laughs> you can sweep the floors with it. You could sweep the dirt into your own grave. Yeah, you could sweep the dirt into your own grave, right, Anita? <laughs> with that one. Yeah. I bash one guy's I bash one guy's head in with this broomstick, the broomstick's gonna break and then I'm I have gonna split. I yeah. have firewood then. That's all I got. Ah, firewood. Alright, let's go with the sword with sword. this one. Sword. Sword. So sword, is, sword is overpowered. Another grandma takes the minute sword. Round three, we have a large kind of beans that comes in a pack of twelve versus a large umbrella. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think the beans are more useful. Dude, the beans are way more useful. Are you kidding? (laughs) I was going to say you could use the umbrella as a form of shield. Could you not? Bro, Anita. Umbrella weak. Anita. No? When's the last time you used an umbrella? They all flip apart. When it rains? No, 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 no. I was going to say if we have like a really sturdy umbrella, um, Mm. you could use it as more like a spear. Because a spear is like an S tier zombie weapon, because you get the main reason a spear is good because you have distance, right? Oh, right. range. Like if okay. I'm in a hallway and the zombies yeah. coming, I could be seven feet away and stab them in the head, and we're good. You know, mm-hmm. that's one. That's the main advantage of a spear. But an umbrella typically is no longer than like three foot, and they're typically look made at out that of- umbrella. Look at large umbrella. It covers the span of four people. Okay, Anita. But a large can of beans. Oh, we got beans. We got beans. Large beans. butter beans. What are you going to do with that? What are you, you going to throw it? You're going to bash their heads with it. Yeah. Bash their heads with the beans. It's going to dent after the first swing. And then we'll eat the beans. Anita, have you ever like held a can of beans? I have. You know how sturdy they are. I don't think it's are. very effective. They're very sturdy. They're very... They dent if you drop Anita, it. Anita, Anita, Anita. Anita. We'll pause the recording. We'll pause the recording. You're going to go to your kitchen, find a large butter no. bean can from Bush's Best. Butter beans. Bush and it's going to be, it's very heavy. It's very hard. It's very sturdy, too. It also, what? like, wraps nicely in your hand, too. Like, you just you just grab onto it. It's just like, mm, just like a nice. <laughs> what? And you can eat it, too, if you're hungry. If we for Having some reason, yeah, if we for some reason had a steel reinforced umbrella, the umbrella would be good. Yeah, but, but like I'm where assuming are you it's get not that? because they're not because umbrellas are cheap and shitty typically. Like <laughs> I found the picture online of like a, a weaponized umbrella. <laughs> Look at that one. But That's ours is not good. that. Ours is not that, by the <laughs> way. So it's ours is just a standard shitty umbrella. Um yeah, so, I, I never said it's uh the what's the what's the movie where they used umbrellas as weapons? Kingsman. Kingsman. Yeah, it's no Kingsman it's not umbrella. A Kingsman umbrella. It's no. just a normal shitty umbrella. Normal I think umbrella. The beans. Like even if the beans is a shittier weapon, I rather have that than the umbrella. Really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Um. Think of these two things as the things you grab a target. Also, um, think about this, Anita. We got twelve mm-hmm. beans. We can distract 12 times before we run away. We could throw them across the room and make a lot of noise. This umbrella. Diversion, we're, okay. We're pretty screwed. Also, Anita, they're not just normal beans. It's butter beans. What's special about butter beans? It tastes great. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever eaten butter I've beans. I've never had butter beans. You know what? I haven't either. This is just the best picture I could find of a large exactly. bean can. I know butter bean, they're boxer. 
from the 90s, but I don't know <laughs> actual butter. Bro, if you're making pasta, you can use this as a source of butter. Oh. Let's go with the beans. <laughs> Since 1908, beans. Bush's best large butter beans can pack of 12. Moves on to the next round. Round four, we have golf club versus a oh. DIY spear. Imagine oh, that you have yeah. the necessary things to make a spear, like a large stick, uh, a little 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 mm. box cutter sword, and then like a little little some threads. You can make a spear DIY style. So, golf clubs. If it's a driver or a wood, you're screwed because they're made out of fiber, carbon fiber, and they'll break real quick. Oh, right? does it? If it's more of an iron, particularly if it's an Let's older golf club, it's solid. Pretty solid. Like, in that picture, uh, Seti Pak is using an iron. I believe it's a metal shaft. It's pretty robust. Ooh. Um, okay. Nice. Okay. But a spear, I think, is just like a top tier, like an S tier one. But, like, are you but confident in making yourself a spear? I am. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, but if it was me, I would take a metal pipe and then put the sharp thing at the end, you know? But. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I say this, wooden. but, like, how hard could it be to make a spear? You're just essentially like, getting a long like, thing like, and sticking a sharp a, thing at the end. If you had a stick and you put a sharp thing and you had, like, gorilla tape, the thing that I used to hold up my bumper that one time when we I hit the deer with my car, Warren, <laughs> if I had that tape and I wrapped the... the, the, the the thing at the top, we're Gucci. Mm. Um, I forgot you killed the deer once. Let's not talk about it. I brought it up though. <laughs> yeah, you did. None of our and, listeners know what it is. And then you guys called me deer killer for like two years straight afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not my fault. All right. Um, hey, hmm. I, I think I go with the spear on this one. I'm not gonna lie. Spear. Yeah. Spear. Spear. I was just making myself spear DIY. Round five, we got scissors versus a riot shield. Ooh. Riot Ooh. shield. I feel like riot shield. That's shields a proper are... shield. Yeah, that's, that's a proper literally shield. what you need. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's the problem with a riot shield. You ain't going to do too much damage, but you could hold people back. So one of the strategies I've seen in a movie is like they have the riot shield guy. He's in full protection, so he ain't going to get bit too bad, right? He mm -hmm. holds them somewhere, and then the homies come and they kill the zombie. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, it's a two-person strategy where Paralyzing the Raju guy it. will push the zombie against the wall or something mm. uh -huh, or hold uh -huh. them there, and then your friend will come and hit them in the head or something. I mean, if you're alone, you could kind of do what Madongsok did in, in Train to Busan, where, like, you hold up the shield and you have a little, I don't know, like a little bat or something, and then you whack them on the head <laughs> as you <laughs> progress forward, Scissor, you know? Scissors are good on in theory. Like, we could use that scissor to make the spear, right? Uh. But, but... Just scissors the themselves, you have no reach. That's the problem. Mm, no mm. range. We got no range. And zombies are like ripping, they're biting, you know? Fair. That seems like mm. very precarious. Fair, fair, fair. Um, Riot shield. The thing with scissors, though, is like you could take that apart to make two. Two blades. spears. Yeah, two spears. Make two spears. Each hand. Oh, each yeah. hand. I Ooh. need a dual wielding. Ooh. I need a dual wielding. <laughs> Somebody's seen Sword Art Online. Uh, which, <laughs> no. I think the shield's more functional, though, to be honest. I think shield is underrated and, uh, and a potential winner overall. Mm. It's just a great way to move forward. I mean, I like the shield because it feels... I feel like we don't have a lot of weapons that would help with defense, right? But I think it depends a lot on your personal strength. So, like, if you're not a, That's true. a big person, like, there's not going to be much That use. shield might be pretty robust. I'm going to look up how much a riot shield weighs. Yo, it's okay. I've been working out. Riot shields okay. weigh, it could be between <laughs> okay, 6 Lauren. to 14 pounds. That's pretty heavy. But you do rest them on your whole arm, not yeah. just holding your hand. Mm. You know? There's that. Either way, it's still better than scissors. Let's go with the shield. Shield. All right, shield. Takes the win. Did you know back in the day, the Mongolians would cook meat on their shields? They would have metal shields, so they would Ooh, just put it over a like fire a and cook meat on it. Like Koreans do with the cauldron lid. Same type of oh. thing. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Round six. We have a fire <laughs> extinguisher versus a Stanley bottle. Cup. Olivia Rodrigo. That's who we're picking. No. Um, <laughs> I don't understand this Stanley cup thing. Like, I, I've been looking into it. Like, what's the... Why? It's Nobody a quality does. cup. Yeah, it but like... It fire. 
<laughs> Who needs a two liter eighty dollar tumbler? Yeah. Apparently, if you're, you know, in high school right now, you do. Um, hey, fire oh, extinguisher. Like, you could use it. You could use it as like a brunt force weapon, yeah, like, right? If you, if, or if the problem is, hmm? I don't need a or 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 actually like the spray. The spray, Stuff. yeah. My problem is if I decided, all right, I got this fire extinguisher. It's gonna be my blunt force weapon. I'm gonna bash, boom, 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 right? Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Give it up, boom, 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 <laughs> right? If I'm gonna do that, it's almost sure. dead. Um, I would be afraid of it exploding because of the stuff on the inside. Right? Really? The condensed oh, air and other things. Oh. So I, you would have to empty it out first, right? But the problem with emptying it out and spraying it all over the place is, then if I actually have a fire, I don't have a fire extinguisher anymore. You get what I'm saying? Like, you have to oh, weigh so that. Would, uh, okay, but like at the same time, is a Stanley tumbler ever gonna take out fires? Doesn't oh, have enough water it in it. It would stand fire, but it won't put it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna go strong? inside the bottle is it, though. Is it strong? Like, I have no clue. I've never talked. I heard. Those I think it got really popular because a woman posted how her car caught on fire. Oh, and her I did Stanley see that. Cup. Survived. Was he yeah. survived? But yeah. So what you're telling me is I stuff myself inside the Stanley Tumbler. No. Use it as a riot shield against yeah. <laughs> everyone in the world. Um, I don't know if I'm flexible enough to fit in one of those. I'm not going to lie, Anita. You most definitely are not. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I think the fire extinguisher is just better. Fire extinguisher. Jazz for your soul. Come fire extinguisher jazz. takes the win. Can we just pick Olivia <laughs> Rodrigo, though? She's her. <laughs> Round seven, we have flamethrower versus bow and arrow. Oh. It comes with a hundred arrows. Oh, well, I was waiting for bow and arrow to come out. You could be Katniss Evergreen, or you could be Hawkeye. Mm. Have, you guys, ever, have the, you guys ever shot pro. a bow and arrow though? Yeah, I have. It's like low key hard to use. High key hard it's, to use. It's, it's not that hard. No, I mean, you have time. <laughs> You'll get practice. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> but you're gonna like break all your arrows within a week, and you're like, oh, ah, yeah. no. I mean, bow and arrow. Mm. Like, if you if it's a traditional wooden bow and arrow, it's difficult. If it's more of a compound bow, which people use. These okay, days. that's uh, we're looking at what Hawkeye has right now, right? He has like a modified compound bow. Right. That looks a little bit more feasible, more mechanical. So you're telling me you're going to be as good as Hawkeye? Yeah, sure. Actually, the one we're looking at in this picture, I don't think is a compound bow. It's a traditional bow. It is. Is it? We're screwed then. Yeah, it's screwed. Oh, I'm looking right. at a picture of it. It's tough. You're going to have to get good at it real quick. But fire flamethrower, I feel like I'm more of a hazard to myself with it. You're going to just burn everything I'm gonna around I'm going to burn you. myself. Oh, yeah. But it would be cool. I know, right? Dude, if you're going to... Chances are, like, if it's a zombie apocalypse, I'm not you, gonna survive very long. Yeah. Might as well go out strong. You know what I mean? Like, put everything to fire. But will will the fire actually kill the zombies? Yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. It looks cool. It does. It does. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, bow and arrow is actually better because not only is it a weapon, you it's can quiet. hunt. With it. No, you, it's quiet, and you can hunt and get food. Exactly. But there's Multi-purpose. only 100 arrows, guys. You can make okay, new if arrows. You hunt, using if twigs. you hunt, you can reuse it. Yeah, you can make new arrows. That's uh, both are very fair points. You could retrieve old ones. <laughs> make, <laughs> act, yeah. All right. I guess bow and arrow takes the win here. Bow yeah, and arrow is yeah. a high tier if you can use it. Yes. It's like it's like S tier. Bow and arrow progresses too. Round of eights. Uh, not, lastly, we have a hiking stick versus a slingshot. Those Ooh. hiking sticks are not that. They, they're like uh, they're they're strong, but it's not like the best thing ever. Slingshot has the same problem. Uh, you chose like a traditional slingshot. Now, they sell modernized slingshots. They're crazy. These Wait, what? Modernized slingshots? And you shoot like metal BBs. Like a gun. Yeah. Oh, dude, that sounds uh, very not safe. They, yeah, they sell like crazy ones these days. Um, I mean, a hiking stick is long. It's got range. Doesn't look very durable though. That's fair. It's probably like some cheap, yeah, uh, like tin aluminum. Like, look at this slingshot, and you shoot metal BBs with it. That looks insane, bro. That looks. This looks just metal. 
Yeah, it's metal, <laughs> really? and you shoot BBs, metal ones. Oh wow! Um, but slingshots are kind of difficult too. You know, it's yeah, same like, thing with the bow and arrow. Good luck aiming. Like, it's, I feel like it's almost That's harder. Kind of issue. Yeah, it probably is harder. Um, but over a hiking thick. stick, though, yeah. I don't, I don't know how I don't know how durable slingshot. it is. Yeah, which one would you pick? The slingshot. For the Ooh. distance aspect. It's Fair. quiet. I'll also take the slingshot. Okay. Let's pick it. Alright. Uh now we're going on to the quarterfinals. Uh we got a fire extinguisher versus a slingshot. Ooh. Slingshot. Uh, I feel like I would uh. do better with a fire extinguisher. Just like hit back people's heads with it, you know what I mean? Slingshots, I do like. Have you tried aiming those things? Those are like. I actually have not, so I will. Pick, I guess we should. I did fire. like the fourth grade, which was about was rough. Was it rough? It was hard. I did not have a good time. Almost hit a friend. Oh, sh oh my! Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of funny throwing weapons, can I tell you a story about um, a boomerang that my dad bought once? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> my dad got a boomerang because you know we he owns a fishing store that we used to do a little bit of hunting too so people would just give him fun things right one of his friends mm. brought him a boomerang and we were like oh cool boomerang so that my dad uh, i think it was a weekend or something he's like douglas let's go throw the boomerang i'm like yes it's gonna be so oh, cool no. we're gonna That's throw it dangerous. it's gonna fly around so cool we walk outside i'm all excited he takes the boomerang he throws it and lands on our roof he doesn't say uh, one word he walks inside we never <laughs> talk about it again oh no it didn't come back <laughs> he just threw it and this is when i lived on like a two three-story house and went to the roof and just walked inside <laughs> Oh. That was so funny. Wait, did, did, is it still there? Where did you buy it? Probably. It just disappeared. <laughs> we never talked about it again. We did not have any discussion. It was just gone. We we just looked at each other and he looked disappointed and walked inside. Oh, that was it. Oh, man. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, um, next time I see your dad, I'm getting, I'm getting a boomerang. No. Uh, fire, fire extinguisher. Is probably more reasonable for us, even though slingshot is better if we're capable of using it. I agree. Wait, do you get as many whatever pellets? As uh, in the let's picture, be reasonable. Or? Let's be reasonable. Let's say it comes with a hundred pellets. But you can shoot rocks. Yeah, this. Yeah, this is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, you can shoot anything. That's multi. Uh, All right, anyway. let's choose the slingshot. No, no, no. Here, guys, hear me out. If you, uh oh, it, it, okay, if you. Angle yourself correctly with the fire extinguisher and push mm -hmm. yourself at the right angle and the right moment in time. It's enough pressure for you to jump very slightly, and that, that could be very helpful for you when you're in a zombie apocalypse. You know what I mean? Like, what? Yeah. Using the pressure coming from the fire extinguisher, you can kind of float a little bit. It's very useful. So, are, are we still going to no. choose the slingshot over yes. something that makes you fly? Anita? What? No, like uh, an what? inch? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a whole inch. Slingshot. <laughs> Doug, fire extinguisher, right? Yeah. All right, two to I one, fire that. extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> there we go. All right, uh, next to ooh, we got a sword versus oh, a machete. A <laughs> one of these doesn't have a grandma. <laughs> like, like, I know the pictures both have grandmas, but one of these weapons does not come with a grandma we got to protect. Okay. What exactly is the difference between a machete and a sword? Um, okay. You want to go from the board Let me explain. Size. Let me explain. Um, machete is shorter, right? It's mm -hmm. very thin. It's thinner. Okay. Um, it's not that long. It's probably two or three feet maximum. A sword, unless it's a katana, which is a one-sided sword, will typically be double-sided. And the difference is the sword will probably be longer and it will probably be better for stabbing. As well, you can stab with it. Machete, mm. you could also mm. stab, but you're, it's a one-handed weapon. Sword is two; you have more leverage. You know. Okay, I feel mm. like based on what you said, a sword might be more appropriate for a zombie. There's apocalypse. a reason why very few wars were done with machetes, and a lot of wars were done with swords. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, like, that yeah. is true. Machetes are more like if some if there's a crazy guy with a machete, right? You hear it on the news or something, right? But a sword is like, holy shit, this guy is a sword. More of a wilderness thing, isn't yeah. it? Like machetes are more. Machete is probably yeah. more useful for surviving the zombie apocalypse, yeah. but as a straight up weapon, the sword is probably. Mm. 
All right. And has and it will not come with a grandma to worry about. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. That's the big difference. Yeah, yeah but look, if you choose a machete, sorry, you could grandma. not be lonely. But she'll make you nice chocolate chip muffins. What if we yeah. both die because we got she's a machete also, instead of a sword? She's also eating your food and using up your resources. And and I'm but willing to share that through the power of love and friendship. Yeah, all of the survival shows they show that you need to have a team. Fine, fine. People, I don't care about. Fine, screw the grandma. She can die in a little pit. <laughs> choose, oh, whoa, you choose the Lord. You chose this so guy. Grandma so word. Machete Gride died because of you guys. Sword takes the win. Round three, we got large can of beans, pack of 12 versus bow and arrow, right, 100 arrows. This ain't even a discussion. We're picking the bow and arrow here. Ahead, <laughs> Thank on. you. Thank you. Let's not meme around. Anything has to go to her thing. No more nonsense. Sometime was big bow and arrow. But it's butter beans. No. All right. I bet they don't even taste good. <laughs> I'm sure they taste fucking awful. <laughs> All right, bow and arrow, 100 arrows. Round four, we have a riot shield versus a spear. DIY. Mm. Oh, okay, this is actually kind of hard. Defense or offense? Mm. I, I think like the spear is better. I, I would agree with you. It's just like a part of it is I have to make it. How much do I trust myself in making spears? I've never made a spear. When you get into the zombie apocalypse situation, you got no one to trust typically but yourself. Or a Even large <laughs> can of butter beans. That's also very trustworthy. That butter beans is, well, I'm going to eat for 12 days and then cry for another two weeks while I starve and then I just die with the beans. But hey. the shield, like, what are you going to do? You go, oh, dunk, 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 I'm using the shield. <laughs> and then what are you going to do, run away? Like, <laughs> like what are you going to do? You can, dunk, uh, dunk, dunk. <laughs> you can cosplay as Reinhardt from... um. <laughs> From no. Overwatch. <laughs> no, the spear's better. Oh, the spear is probably more feasible. All like right. you will make some damage, hopefully. We will do stabby stabby out of range with spears. All right. Uh, semifinals. We got sword versus bow and arrow. Oh. A sword. Sword. Oh, take sword. The sword. Yeah, sword. easier to learn. Also, it does not come with the grandma. All mm. right, we got a fire extinguisher versus a spear. It's a spear. 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 Realistically, if I have a fire extinguisher, I'm taking it apart to make a spear. How? Huh? How would you make a spear of a fire extinguisher? Uh, by doing it really well. Uh, spear <laughs> DIY versus a sword. This one really comes out to how good is your spear? Because I think a spear is a better weapon inherently mm -hmm. than a sword. It's easier to not also, mess up. Like if imagine like you're in like friendly. Imagine you're in a hallway. Yeah. Sword, you could, you're probably going to swing and hit the ceiling or a wall or something, right? Yes. Oh, that's fair. Whereas the spear, you're just like, you know, anyone can use a spear. It's not, poke, like, not poke, too difficult. Stab. stab, stab, stab. Also, it's a lot lighter, I imagine. It's just a lot probably easier lighter. to use. Yeah. If it's a good spear, the spear wins. If it's a don't like a shitty spear, the sword wins. So it's fairly even. It depends on what you want to do. But I think just getting distance and not getting bitten is the most important thing. Honestly. Mm, range, range. Range. I'll pick a spear. I trust myself. Well, we're gonna make a good spear. We're gonna get some uh, gorilla tape. We're gonna <laughs> glue on a box box cutter, and we're gonna make a nice uh, little spear. Well, let's go spear. A spear takes the win. Hey, wow. there we go. There we go. Best weapon for a zombie apocalypse. Time. All right, this was a funny random thing what we did. <laughs> I, I we learned some things. <laughs> we learned some things. We got edumacated. Um. That ends Soldier Talk episode 275. We'll be back next week. We're going to cover the, the fun tracks. I'm excited for this week of music. We got like wow. Baby Monster. We got Artemis. TXT. Oh, who else? TXT. TXT. Yeah, we got a lot of fun things. So we'll see you guys then. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.